ATAS International would like to give you a closer look at their Dutch seam roof, the very best standing seam panel roofing system in the world. ATAS has been designing and manufacturing residential and commercial metal panels since 1963. ATAS roofing products are found in different roofing structures, from Air Force bases in Alaska to health centers in Florida, and from postal facilities in California to homes in Maine. Our products are also found on churches in Canada and hotels on St. Martin and Costa Rica. ATAS is continuously expanding their services and products in the U.S. and abroad. The Dutch seam roof by ATAS introduces a unique interlocking seam for a true standing seam roof. The ATAS Dutch seam roof is an integral standing seam panel with a lock design that provides a positive panel interlock and is quick and easy to install. This roofing system provides a complete weather shield and also adds structural strength to your roof. We begin our installation by installing water and ice shields along our eave areas and in our valley areas as an insurance against leaking caused by an ice buildup along the eave line. The use of this product is recommended in areas which have the type of climate where a freeze-thaw situation could exist. After our water and ice shields are done, we would install our eave trim. After our eave trim is installed, we would install our gable rake starter cleat. Next, we would install our felt paper. We recommend the use of a 30-pound saturated asphalt felt as moisture and vapor retarder. Please notice that the felt is installed from the bottom of the roof to the top, overlapping the lower course with your first course overlapping the drip edge or eave trim. The felt is fastened using staples or roofing nails. Cap nails should never be used because there is a chance that the thickness of the nail could telegraph through the panel. This could harm the integrity of the panel. Before the drip edge is installed, it's a good idea to cut and notch the end of the piece to allow for a fold over around the outside corner for finishing the drip edge. It is also recommended that you allow enough additional length to have an overlap over the pieces of drip edge. The fold over is also recommended at all other inside and outside corners. It is also easier to pre-drill or pre-punch the trim using a Whitney punch to aid in the installation of the screws. By making the hole a little larger than the screws, it would allow for expansion. A scratch awl or hand punch could also be used for this procedure. Spacing for these screws is two feet on center maximum. Before the panels are installed, the use of a red rosin or building paper is recommended. This acts as a slip sheet to allow the panels to expand and contract freely without having the felt stick to the back of the panels. The rosin paper is installed from eave to ridge to make it easier to walk on during panel installation. This particular MRD installation will utilize a flat clip that is used mostly with a solid wood substrate. There are different style clips, some of the same profile but in a heavier gauge material and made out of stainless steel. There are some made out of stainless steel and galvanized steel that are designed to elevate the panel above the substrate or if it is open framing above the purlins. This not only elevates the panel but allows you to use hex head fasteners rather than the pancake head type screws which must be used with the flat clip. Hex head screws are also easier to drive into the steel purlins. Also, using the raised clip eliminates the need for the rosin paper and allows for ventilation between the panel and the roof deck. Before panel installation can continue, it is necessary to check the squareness of the roof. We will accomplish this using the 345 triangle method. To do this, we will measure in from the gable starting cleat the width of the panel plus an additional 3 eighths of an inch at the eave and also at the ridge. We will then snap a line. On that line, we will measure up four feet vertically and we will measure over horizontally three feet. From that four foot mark to the three foot mark, we should have a measurement of exactly five feet, which means it would be square. If it is not square, some adjustments need to be made. Adjustments up to one and one half inches can be made in the gable trim. Once we are sure that the gable is square, a clip will be fastened three-eighths of an inch from the starter cleat to allow our first panel to be installed without having an exposed fastener. This allows for expansion and contraction. Panels are supplied with vinyl masking over the standing seam to protect the painted surface during shipping. This masking must be removed prior to installation. Once this masking is exposed to sunlight, it would become very difficult to remove. The panel will now be made ready for installation. The first thing we will do is measure one inch from the bottom edge of the panel. After this is done, we will take our shears and make a cut on both sides of the panel. 
We will then cut off the lower side of the seam. Next, we will cut the outer edge of the high seam and then fold over the inner edge toward the outside. This will close off the end of the seam. This can also be done using an end plug in a matching color which can be provided. We will then take our folding tool and fold the flat section of the pan down. By doing this, we have created an additional point of fastening where it is needed the most because wind force is the greatest along the edge of a roof. This also eliminates the opportunity for fish mouth to occur. Fish mouth is a condition when the pan would crown slightly in between the two upturned sides of the pan. This fold also leaves a very neat appearance. The flat clips will now be installed 3 eighths of an inch from the starter cleat, assuming the roof is square. They should be placed one foot on center with the first clip being fastened approximately 4 to 6 inches from the bottom of the eave trim. The remainder of the clips throughout the roof should be installed on two foot centers. Before we install the first panel, we will fasten a Z closure to the face of the panel making sure to put a caulking tape sealant between the Z and the face of the panel. This tape or quality sealants are recommended when mounting metal to metal products. The Z will then be fastened to the panel using pop rivets or short screws installed 8 inches on center. It is imperative that the fasteners be installed directly through the tape to maintain full compression of the tape. The fasteners are installed from the back of the panels because of the flatter profile of that side of the fasteners. The first is installed by placing the standing seam part of the panel directly over the clips and then applying constant pressure to the seam until a snapping sound is heard. This ensures that the proper locking has occurred. After the locking procedure is complete, the panel is then slid up into place where it will lock into the eave trim. A screw is then placed approximately one inch down from the ridge to keep the panel from sliding down temporarily. Next, the side clip will be installed following the same procedure as earlier, with the first one being installed at the top edge of the eave trim. For the first three panels, the clip should be one foot on center. After that, they could be installed two feet on center. This clip pattern could vary depending on wind load requirements and local building codes. It is always advisable to install finished trims as soon as possible since the roof is not waterproof until they are installed. Before we install our gable trim, we will fold over the end of the trim to close it up. It will be hooked onto the gable starter cleat and snapped over the Z that has been installed onto the first panel. We will then slide it up into place as needed. A pop rivet will then be installed at the top end of the trim to keep it from sliding down. If additional trims are needed to complete the gable, they would overlap the lower trim by 3 inches and again be riveted at the top in the same fashion as the first one. The rivet is installed in the outer portion of the Z, so if the rivet were to leak, it would leak onto the panel and not behind the Z. The roof is now ready for the installation of additional panels using the same positive pressure on the seam, allowing it to snap into place, and then sliding it up over the eave trim and fastening the panel at the top in the same manner as the preceding panel. Before we continue with our panel installation, we will install our valley flashing. The valley has been cut to match the angle of the eave trim. Also, the high V of the valley has been cut to close the end of the valley. The valley is then installed using screws in the upper corners of the valley. After the valley is installed, place a mark a minimum of 4 inches from the center of the valley toward the outer edge on both sides of the valley and at the top and bottom of the valley. This 4 inch dimension can be increased up to 6 depending on the length of the valley and also the pitch of the roof to be able to accommodate the additional flow of water. At these marks, a chalk line will be snapped and a joggle cleat will be installed which will allow for the panels in the valley to be folded over to provide for an anchoring device for the panels. After the cleat location is established, a sealant is then applied to the back side of the joggle cleat. In this case, we are again using the butyl caulk tape which is easy to use. It also acts like an additional pair of hands and aids in holding the cleat in place. The cleat is then fastened using pancake head zinc coated wood screws that are installed directly through the joggle cleat, through the caulk tape, through the valley, and into the substrate. The location of the caulk tape in regards to the cleat ensures a watertight installation. The screws will be installed approximately 12 inches on center. Now that the cleat is installed on both sides of the valley, we are ready to install the next panel. We will find out what the angle is and what the length of the panel needs to be and allow an additional one inch to allow for the fold over of the panel. When the foldover is complete, the panel will be installed in the same manner as the preceding panels. The bottom clip is installed just above the valley. It is advisable that this clip not be pulled down to the substrate for it could cause a condition known as oil canning. 
This clip should only be tightened to a point where it holds the panel against the turned up hem of the valley. This type of installation allows for good hold down while still allowing for expansion and contraction. The next panel is installed in the same manner. The use of a speed square aids in the ability to find the proper angle without spending too much time doing it. You can now take the angle and transfer it onto the panel. Be sure you allow one inch additional length for the panel fold over, which allows it to be locked into the joggle cleat. After one side of the roof is complete, we will begin finishing our trims. As we stressed before, the roof is not totally weather tight until all trims are complete. We will do this by either using our ridge as our guide or measuring down from the ridge to give us the proper location for placement of the metal Z closures. We will then apply caulk tape to the back side of the Z's, again as a secondary leak prevention. Also a series of screws will then be installed to hold the Z's in place. These also positive fasten the panels to keep them from sliding down the roof. The number of screws will vary on the width of the panels. The screws are very important in maintaining a secure fastening of the panels and even more so if snow retention system is attached on the installation. A minimum of two screws are used in an 11 inch panel and up to four screws are used in a 19 inch panel. The type of Z's being used in this ridge installation are for a non-venting application but an aluminum perforated Z could be supplied for a vented ridge. After the metal Z's are completed, a bead of quality sealant is installed along the sides of the Z's and also over the top of the seam of the panel. This is to aid the sealant of the ridge and also to keep the neoprene closures in the proper location. In this case, it is also a secondary weatherproofing. The ridge cap it is ready to be installed by snapping it over the metal Z's. The protective masking on the trims is removed prior to the installation. Where additional lengths of ridge are needed, an internal splice is used. The metal used for this splice is the same color as the cap. It is 6 inches to 8 inches long. Before it is installed, a double bead of caulk is applied to the metal to prevent any wind-blown rain from penetrating beyond the splice and onto the ridge. This splice is now installed into the one end of the ridge, and the next piece of ridge is ready to be installed. You must maintain approximately 3 16 of an inch between the ridge caps to allow for expansion. In fastening the ridge, a pop rivet or stitch screw will be installed on the folded over portion of the ridge to hold it in place while eliminating the potential of any leaking into the ridge. Also, if fastening is required into the ridge, it is important to install the fasteners on the exterior portion of the metal Z closures as an insurance that if the fastener does leak, it will only leak onto the roof panels and not into or behind the trims. The installation will now continue onto the next portion of the roof. By starting out with the same length piece as we finished with, we are able to match very closely the location of the standing seam, therefore allowing some symmetry of the installation. As you will notice, the installation continues in the same fashion and the trims are completed as we go. Now that we are working on the other side of the hip, we will again start with a piece the same width as the one we finished with on the other side. Care should be taken to make sure that these pieces are started square. Screws are installed at the tops of the panels at the hip location, just like they were at the ridge areas to keep panels from sliding down the roof, but still allowing them to expand toward the bottom of the roof. After panel installation has progressed beyond the hip, we will prepare to install the hip cap. We will set our cap in place to help us determine the proper location of the metal Z closures. Then a chalk line will be used to give us an accurate point from which to work. The metal Z's will then be installed in the same fashion as at the ridge using caulk tape neoprene closure strips, and a clear sealant. Additional screws are being used because of the length of the Z's. The Z's were also installed along the eave area to close the underneath area of the hip cap. When everything is in place, the hip cap is snapped into place to complete the hip area. We will now continue on with the balance of the panels towards our ending gable. The ending of the panel follows exactly the same procedure that we used to start our panels. At this location, the Z is fastened to the panel using pop rivets that are installed through the Z, the caulk tape, and the panel. Make sure that the flush side of the rivets are toward the substrate. Also, clips are used to hold down the panel and still allow for expansion. The gable trim is again folded over to close off the bottom of the edge before it is snapped into place. When the gable is complete, the ridge cap is installed to complete our installation. ATAS International Incorporated is the leading manufacturer of architectural, residential, commercial, metal roofing and siding products. We have operated the family business for over 30 years 
and we have a reputation for fast, responsible customer service. ATAS has over 30 customer service representatives to answer your questions and concerns. Our ATAS production team can now reach precise production levels never before achieved in the metal industry. Our expert craftsmen offer special custom design shapes should your project need them. ATAS also has an experienced drafting and technical staff to assist you with the design, prints, and development of your project. Other special services offered are shop drawings, computer estimating, technical assistance, and heavier gauge custom form trims, and also matching gutters and downspouts. Our fulfillment department is ready to assist you with prompt order processing, saving both time and expense for you, our valued customer. The ATAS belief in quality, craftsmanship, and prompt service has allowed us to expand and we promise to serve you with unequaled product quality, courteous service, and fast order processing. We are here to help you provide your customers with the best metal roofing products anywhere in the world.